Welcome to this week's exam. This is the exam on microscopy for year 10. <clears throat> so before I start the exam, just a quick reminder of the different parts of a microscope which will be useful for this exam. At the top we have the eyepiece and the eyepiece lens. Now the eyepiece lens often has some magnification, but the rest of the magnification in the microscope comes from the objective lenses which can be changed. And the total magnification is can be found by multiplying the magnification of the eyepiece and the objective lens. There is a light source at the bottom of a typical light microscope and the specimen is placed here. And when we use a microscope we always start with the lowest magnification first because it gives the largest field of view and makes it easier to find your specimen and easier to focus. So, <clears throat> let's move on to question one. A student observed palisade cells using a microscope. The microscope had four objective lenses, each with a different magnification. Which objective lens should the student use first? Tick one box. Well, they should use the four times magnification <clears throat> because the rule is we always start with the smallest one and then move up from there. The reason is it gives the largest field of view. In other words, you can see as much of the specimen as possible and it makes it easier to focus. Either one of those will give you the mark. The next question asks you to um, calculate the combination of eyepiece and objective lenses that would give the total magnification of 400. <coughs> You're told the total magnification and you know what the eyepiece could be. So you need to simply figure out which pair would give you 400 when multiplied together. So the formula is total magnification equals magnification of eyepiece lens multiplied by the magnification of the objective lens. If you picked your magnification of eyepiece lens to be 5 times, then you know that your objective lens should be 80 times to give a 400 magnification. Or if you picked 10 as your combination, then you need to pick 40 for your objective lens. Either one of these would be correct. 1C. <clears throat> Table 2 shows the student's results. So they're looking at the width of cells, of the palisade cells. You need to calculate the mean, so you add them up and divide it by the number of cells there are, which is 5. Because the width was measured to, to near the one places, just to two significant figures, you should normally give your mean to two significant figures, but both 12 and 12.4 are given marks in this case. In the next question, where you meant to use the mean we calculated to calculate the real width of a palisade cell using the equation given. Now, we know that the real width is what we're trying to find out, and we want to find that out in millimetres, because the image width we know is in millimetres as well. And this formula only works properly when the image and the real width are given to the same units, with the same units. We know from the earlier part of the question that the magnification is 400. Now the reason I've used 12.4 here and not 12 is whenever you are using a calculated value, i.e. the mean, in an equation, i.e. this equation, then we should use the unrounded number because it will give us a more accurate final answer when we then round that if need be. So then I've got my formula, I need to substitute my numbers and get my answer 0 0.031 millimeters. Question two <coughs> is about the image below shows some muscle cells from the wall of a stomach as seen through a light microscope. And there's what was viewed. You're given a scale bar here which tells you how, what the length would be of the image that is viewed using this particular scale. So this is what we call a scale bar. The figure above is highly magnified and represents, the scale bar in the figure represents 0.1 millimetres. In other words, this length here, which is 3.9 centimetres or 39 millimetres, represents 0.1 millimetres as the actual size. So we're meant to use our ruler to measure the length of the scale bar. So I've done that here and I've got 3.9 centimetres and then calculate the magnification of the figure above. So. The way I would do that is I know the actual size is 0.1 millimetres. That's how much it is in reality. 
but the image size, which is what the scale bar tells me, is 39 millimeters. And I've converted my 3.9 centimeters into 39 millimeters because these need to be the same. And the magnification, therefore, is going to be, using my formula I equals A times M, 39 equals 0 0.1 times M, and then I simply rearrange to get M, and my final answer is 390. If you had measured this to be 4 centimeters, then that's not a problem. You're allowed that small margin of error. So if your answer was 400, you can also give yourself two marks. Next, the muscle cells contain ribosomes, which cannot be seen in the figure above. What is the function of the ribosomes? It is to synthesize proteins or to make proteins. That's a fact you need to learn. <clears throat> Why can't they be seen through a light microscope? Well, ribosomes are too small to be seen through a light microscope. Another way of saying that is light microscopes do not have sufficient magnification or resolution or resolving power. So either of those would get you a mark. Excuse me. Question three. Plants need water to survive. Water moves through a plant in a transpiration stream. Figure two shows stomata on the underside of a leaf. So these are the stomata, the holes between the guard cells. We'll learn about more about this in more detail later on. But the important thing here is about magnification. So one of the cells in, in figure two is 12 millimeters in length in the microscope image. So I've immediately labeled that as I for image size. The size of the real cell is 0 0.03 millimeters, so I've labeled that as A for actual size. Calculate the magnification of the microscope. So I'm using this equation, and I know I is 12, A is 0 0.03 millimeters. Both of the units are the same, so I don't need to convert, and my magnification is what I'm trying to figure out. I've got the formula there, so I substitute and get my final answer times 400. Question four, the scientist observed a cell using an electron microscope. The image size, again, I've labeled it as I, <coughs> and I've labeled the magnification as M, and I need to work out A. So I'm labeling them as I go along, so I'm recognizing them from the question. It says to give my answer in micrometers. So immediately, because I know my actual needs to be in micrometers, I've converted my image size into micrometers as well. Remember, the way to do this is, you know your fact, one millimeter is a thousand micrometers, you should have learned that by heart. I need to go from millimeters to micrometers. To get from one to a thousand, I know I need to multiply by a thousand, and therefore to get from my millimeters to micrometers, I need to multiply by a thousand as well. So it's 25,000 micrometers. Formula, substitute, rearrange, final answer. Now remember, I only reason I'm confident that my answer is correct in terms of the units is because I've converted here. You may have converted afterwards, which is also fine. As long as you recognize that when you use the formula, if I had substituted I using millimeters, the value for A would be in millimeters as well. So then you would need to convert afterwards to micrometers, but that's fine either way. The next question is about <coughs> red blood cells in a blood clot. The fibers labeled X are produced in the early stages of clotting. Um, the average diameter of a red blood cell is 0 0.08 millimeters. So that's a real blood cell. So therefore, I've put the actual size. And on the photograph, that's the image size. So I've labeled 100 millimeters as the image size. I've asked to calculate the magnification. So I've boxed that and put an M there. So again, substitute. And I know my units are the same, so I don't have to convert. And so I, re I substitute the numbers in, and I get 12,500 as my final answer. Remember to rearrange. In this case, I'll be dividing both sides by 0 0.08 to get M on its own. <clears throat> Which microscope was used to take this image? So we're asked to suggest and explain. So my suggestion is going to be through an electron microscope, and the explanation for that, why, do I, why am I sure of that? It's because only an electron microscope can magnify 12,500 times. Remember, light microscopes can only magnify up to around 2,000 times at most. 
Next, define resolving power and magnification. These are just definitions you need to learn off by heart. Have a read and check if you got those correct. 6C. Compare light and electron microscopes. You should include a comparison about the magnification and resolving power. So I've made myself two checkboxes and I've ticked them off as I've done that. And I'm using comparative language because it is a compare question. So I've said electron microscopes have a much higher, and that's my comparative language there, resolving power and magnification compared to light microscopes. Again, more comparative language there. So they have a higher magnification and a higher resolving power. If you compared the specific details, you could also get the marks. <coughs> Excuse me. So, do question seven. Do look to some cheek cells under a light microscope. The actual diameter of the cell is 60 micrometers, so I've put A for actual, and they've been magnified 80 times. That's my M. Calculate the image size, so I'm trying to find out I. Give your answer in meters in standard form. I've put myself check boxes, so when I check my answer, I can tick off I've done all of those things. So first, I've put A, M, and I. Formula, substitute, I've got my answer. I is 4,800 micrometers. But then when I go back, that's not in meters, so I need to convert it into meters. So how do we do that? Well, first we need to remember, to convert meters to centimeters, we need to multiply by 100, because there are 100 centimeters in a meter. There are 10 millimeters in one centimeter, so to convert centimeters to millimeters, I need to multiply by 10. And to convert millimeters into micrometers, I need to multiply by 1,000, because there are 1,000 micrometers in one millimeter. But I'm being asked to go from micrometers all the way up to meters. So instead of multiplying, I need to divide first by 1,000, then divide by 10, then divide by 100 again. But altogether, if I'm doing that, I'm essentially dividing by a million, because a thousand, ten, and a hundred, if I'm dividing by those three, one after the other, it's the same as dividing by a million. So my answer really in meters is 0 0.0048 meters. And then I need to convert that into standard form, and I'll do that by seeing how many times the decimal places has moved, which is three times, <clears throat> and it's a smaller number, so it's a negative power. So my final answer is 4.8 times 10 to the power of negative 3 meters. And that means I've done it in meters and in standard form. Final part of the question asks you to sketch and label um, what cells do saw under the microscope in the box below. Your drawing should be to scale. That's really important. That means you need to use your ruler with each cell being roughly 60 micrometers. So I need to make sure my cells are 60 micrometers, but with a certain scale. Include a scale bar which shows 5 centimeters is 50 micrometers. <clears throat> so I know if I've got 5 centimeters is 50 micrometers, that tells me 1 centimeter is 10 micrometers. So <coughs> excuse me. So if I need 60 micrometers, my cells should be about 6 centimeters long. And that's exactly what I've done here. So my first cell, because of the way the image is showing the cells, <coughs> I've made sure it's 6 centimeters long this way. And my second cell, I've made sure it's 6 centimeters in diameter this way. I've used clear, unbroken lines. I haven't sketched it with lots of lines. <coughs> I've simply used clear, unbroken lines. I've put a label of what cells they are and the magnification that was used, which I was told in the previous question. And I've put... <coughs> Excuse me. I've put a scale bar in it as well. Now, you didn't have to label it like this, but if you did, that's really good. Um, the three marks, I would say, are for unbroken lines to scale. So six centimeters, six centimeters with a scale bar and then the label there as well. So add up your marks out of 30 and put your marks at the front of your sheet. Remember, in addition to marking the exam, you need to make sure that you self-quiz on your notes on circulatory system and that you complete the knowledge questions on size and mass of atoms as part of your normal homework. But you'll also have holiday homework, which will be um, due back on the first day as well.